Hey y'all, what's up? So today we're going to be talking about the three steps to improving your ACT science score to a 30 plus. Specifically to a 30 plus. Like I've said for the other videos in this series for English, Math, and Reading, we are talking about not just improving your science score or any score, we're talking about how to get to a 30 plus because the approach to improving your score to the 90th percentile or above, which is about a 30 plus I think, um, the approach for that is going to be a bit, more, a bit more challenging and rigorous and intense than if you are just trying to go to a mid-20s, high-20s, low-20s, teens, whatever it is, right? There's just more work involved and there's more prerequisites that I'd recommend you have in place depending on the section. So what exactly is this going to look like? I have written down three and a half, maybe four steps actually. It's basically three steps. One of them doesn't really count. So we'll get to those things. But generally, as a prerequisite, the main thing that you have to have in order to improve on the science exam is actually nothing. There are no prerequisites. I know I said some prerequisites for math, which are like some classes or anything like that. For science and I guess for reading, there's no prerequisites involved. You just have to be able to have access to practice exams, which there are six linked for, below for free. So now that you have that out of the way, the prerequisites, we can actually get into the three or four steps. So the first step of the three or four is you need to basically find a method for skimming or reading the passage on the science exam that works best for you. Different students have different preferences. So for example, there's different ways to go about it. Some students like to do questions first, like look at the questions and then go to the passage. Some students, like the students that we work with and that you'll find in all of our videos on our channel, we recommend this approach, which is to passage first and then go to the questions. Some students might even like, rec so like another way to go about it is skim everything and then go to the questions or read in depth, then go to the questions. There's different ways to do it. And the, the thing that I'll say is find the method that works best for you by experimenting. You should experiment with different methods. I will also say that most of the students that I've seen, both from our channel and the students that I've tutored, most of the ones that I've seen that have improved to a very high score on science, that is 30 plus, they have done the passage first, then go to the questions approach. And when I say passage first, that means you skim the pass. Like, first of all, you divide the 35 minutes into six portions. So you have, and this is getting to my second point, but you, you divide an even amount of time for each passage. You take about one to two minutes to read the passage, then the rest of the time for the questions. okay? It's very structured. And you refer back to the passage whenever needed when you're in the questions. You annotate the passage as needed, kind of go through it like that, okay? That's what I've seen work best for students, and that's generally what I recommend for that reason. I personally use that. I improve 15 points with that approach. So... Um, take that how you want it. I've had students that have improved a lot with it as well, okay? So that's what I recommend. But again, you have the questions first approach. You can read everything in depth as opposed to skimming. You can choose to annotate or not choose to annotate. I recommend annotating, looking at for variables, relationships, and differences. If you don't know what that means, if you don't know what annotation looks like, if you don't really know what variables, relationships, and differences are and, and, and how that relates to the science exam, check out the videos that I'm going to link below as well as I'll, I'll try to put up a card that goes over, that, that recommends videos that goes over these specific things because I've talked about it a million times on this channel. I'm just trying to give you guys the most concise advice. That doesn't really count as a step. You just got to look at that on your own, okay? So first thing is find the right method for you in terms of how to look at the passage because how you look at the passage is going to shape how you answer the questions. It's going to shape how, how much time you spend and it's going to, everything starts there, okay? That's the first step and all those things that I just discussed, the videos and all that, that's embedded into that first step. The next thing is you need to find a timing method that works as well. And there's, there's different ways to go about this. For reading, I, I, made this, I made a similar video like this where I give you just one method that works for 30 plus. And that is just to divide it up evenly. For science, it's a lot harder to do that because not every passage of the six is the same difficulty. Some of them are just going to be harder. Some of them typically have more questions. Some of them have longer passages. Literally, there's just more stuff. So dividing your time evenly, while on paper you could do it and you should do it, it might not be the best way to go about that. But that's one method you could use and you can experiment with that. Another method is to understand the fact that you're gonna typically get one conflicting viewpoints passage, two data representation, and three research summaries, where the one conflicting viewpoints and the two, sorry, three research summaries are gonna be a bit more challenging than the two data representation. I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you, but just take notes or something, okay? Now, understanding that some of the passages, those four, are gonna be a bit harder, what you can do is, Typically conflicting viewpoints takes the most time for students and that's typically the hardest for most students. You can take seven minutes per passage on the conflicting viewpoints. You can do six minutes per passage on the three research summaries and then two, uh, five minutes per passage on the two data representation. So you have five, five, six, 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 and then you have seven. That adds up to 35 if I did my math correctly, which I think I did. So we're good. And um, again, this is something that I recommend if you want to 
spend like you're, you're not just spending time but you're allotting time appropriately as needed because some parts of the exam are just going to require more time some of them are just not going to require more time students ask me a lot of times should i go through the exam and kind of locate where the harder passages are where the easier ones are my answer typically is no because if you use this approach regardless of whether you use the divide everything up evenly or this approach you're you know which passages you're looking at in in the moment regardless of what's coming later you know what you're looking at so you know what time you can you can allot to that specific thing which means you should have enough time for the ones later on because that's a, you know what's gonna you're gonna, you know the sequence like not the sequence but you know that there's a certain number of them right so if you've already gotten three research summaries and those are the first three passages you know you're done with the six minute passages you're only gonna have the one for seven minutes and the two for five minutes does that make sense you know you know the time allotted for each one so you don't need to look later on for what passages are coming later and prepare for that the reason this strategy works really well is because some students will do the divide time evenly strategy and then they will find that like you know the first three or four passages are easy and then the last two end up being the hardest ones and they only have like 10 minutes to get through the, the two harder passages that's five minutes per hard passage which is not good that's a that's not a lot of time okay so that's why i recommend this strategy if you want to use it again the idea is to experiment um you can play around with this with the timing maybe shave 45 seconds off one category add 45 seconds to another do what you want okay but this is just a general outline 567 or 550 per passage okay that's one way to go about timing okay let's get to our next thing so just as a recap so far find the right reading method for you by watching the videos that i recommended and then on top of that find the right timing method for you the last thing is you need to be sorry that's not the last thing there's actually one and a half things left so the half thing is to watch our demo videos and i guess i already said this so i don't know why i'm saying it again but the demo videos will help you see what the um strategy that i'm talking about looks like actually i don't think i recommend i haven't mentioned this yet the demo videos when i'm talking about demo videos it's like me actually taking a science exam and applying the timing strategy the reading strategy the annotation strategy like literally doing everything for you so you can see what it looks like we have videos on our channel where i literally go through full science i have one where i go through a full science exam and i do it in like 30 31 minutes okay so watch that it will help you get an idea of what this looks like so you can try to apply it yourself okay I really recommend you do that because that that demo can help you see what you should be doing uh, otherwise you're kind of just shooting in the dark right so watch the demo videos it'll help you get an idea of what it looks like and um, the last thing is you need to practice the heck out of the strategy whatever strategy you choose whatever method for timing or for reading that you chose you got to practice that you need to practice it and you know every student needs to practice and this is what separates the students that are trying to go for like a mid 20s versus a 30 plus the students that are going for 30 plus do that extra practice. They go beyond the point where it's like their score is fluctuating and they're like getting discouraged. Your score is going to fluctuate. You're going to get discouraged. But if you have to, you have to keep pushing through that and keep experimenting, keep iterating your strategies to make sure that you finally solidify a score. Whether that score is a 29 or a 25, I mean, it's going to vary. But you can still do this if you follow the steps, these steps, and you can, you know, as long as you have no comprehension issues or anything like that that are serious, then you have every reason to be able to do this, okay? So, um, and most likely you're not fitting into the scenario where you do have a compre comprehension issue. So, um, I have every reason to believe that you can follow this. I've helped students score that are scoring very low do this as well. So, I have every reason to believe that you can do it. Coming from someone who started at a 19 on the science exam and went on to a 34, okay? So, it's possible, you just gotta practice it. Eight to 12 times is typically what I recommend for students if you're trying to go for a very high score. Um, eight to 12 seems like a lot and you need to make sure that those are eight to 12 official exams. Like I said, there's six official exams for free linked below. Um, but, but yeah, make sure that you're using these to practice, to experiment with strategies. You're doing it with timing. Do not take exams without timing because that's not the actual exam. Um, and that's basically it. If you need any more help with this, if you are looking to uh, get some help like one-on-one -on -one with this or you want more demos of what this looks like or you want me to demo it to you on like a live call or anything like that, like a Zoom call, then you should check out our tutoring program because we have students that use it and that really enjoy working with us, that use our online problems, that use our videos, our skill videos that are different from our YouTube videos uh, and then go over all the skills on the exam. Um, we've had students improve with this program five to nine points within just a few weeks. I'm not kidding. So check it out. It's on our website. It's linked below. We have discounts running right now. So um, we'd love to work with you if you're trying to improve your ACT score and um, let us know if you're interested. So I'll leave it at that. Um, best of luck prepping. I hope this was helpful. Again, remember the points, find the right reading method, find the timing method, um, watch the demo videos and what was the last thing? Practice a lot, okay? Because your score is going to fluctuate and you need to get through that. So 
I'll leave it at that. I'm going to stop talking now. Best of luck on your exam. Peace.